Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our phone number on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share, we especially like hearing those. Or if you just want to contribute to, our con uh, to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee off our websites, or you can call 866-735-2470. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a Longevity business. You can also purchase Longevity products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee. Call 866-735-2470 for more information or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, Truth Transdermal C Balm. Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and our Truth Transdermal C Serum. Voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine. All our Truth Treatment products are at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. We're talking about heart disease, the leading cause of death and misery in this country and around the world. 600,000 plus people die from heart disease every year in this country. For centuries, writers and poets have imbued the heart with metaphysical properties, valor, bravery, love, courage. Even the word courage comes from the same root as coronary, coro, which means heart in Latin. As it turns out, some of these powers, some of these abstract metaphysical powers that have historically been attributed to the heart may not necessarily be only poetry. That's because these days scientists are beginning to understand that the rhythms of the heart, the way the heart beats, may actually be an indicator of abstract emotions. Research is proving that things like negative emotions, anger, frustration, rage, jealousy, these things can result in changes in the heart rhythm that can actually affect, negatively affect, the health of various organs in the body. What's more, scientists are now beginning to find that the heart, in essence, has a brain. The heart has a mind of its own. The heart has neurology associated with it, neurology that can act quite independently of the brain in our heads. It can affect how we perceive the world, how we respond to the world. This is the neurology. The neurons in the heart can actually affect the way we communicate and perceive and respond to the world around us in our day-to-day -day lives. And the heart, the brain in the heart, can influence how we think and how we feel. And by the way, there is a difference between feelings and emotions. Feelings 
are physical sensations and emotions are mental responses to those physical sensations. So emotions are kind of a link between our physical feelings and our mental responses. They're a link between the body and the brain. The physical sensations associated with sadness and happiness, those can actually be detected in the body. In fact, there's really only two basic body feelings. There's the body feeling that's associated with fear and there's a, or survival threat, and then there's a body feeling that's associated with safety. Those are basically the two feelings that we have. What we call emotions, things like anger and rage and jealousy or joy or happiness, those are actually harmonics of these basic feelings inside the body. They're actually mental interpretations of these basic feelings in the body. There's only two basic feelings. And these basic feelings many, time, many times in the body run underneath all of our ways of thinking and all of our ways of being. And we don't even notice these fundamental kinds of feelings in the body, these basic subtle feelings that are always there. For most of us, these basic subtle feelings that are always there are about fear. The poet Thoreau said, men leave lives of, lead lives of quiet desperation. And what he meant was that underneath all of our actions, underneath our behaviors, underneath the way we live our lives consciously, there's this kind of underneath sensation, this subtle sensation, almost like a fine mist of desperation. He called it desperation. I call it fear or basically survival threat. And there's no way that if we have this kind of basic subliminal sensation of fear that's underneath our behaviors and actions, there's no way it's not going to affect how we feel ultimately or how our body shows up. In fact, if you're dealing with some kind of chronic long-term degenerative disease, kind of try to tune in to the sensations in your body, very, very subtle sensations, and more likely than not, you're going to see kind of an, a disquiet some kind of disturbance, some, something that's just not right. And it's a feeling. And this feeling has got to affect all of the cells in our body. And I personally believe that, at least partially, it's related to our epidemic of chronic degenerative diseases. The sense that we're not safe, that underlies everything. That's kind of a, it's a very, very subtle sense. Imagine if instead of this subtle sense that we're not safe, we had a subtle sense that we were safe. Imagine if we had this subtle sense underneath us that everything was going to be okay, that uh, there were no problems, that everything was going to work out. We would be much, much healthier from a physical perspective. Now, emotions, on the other hand, emotions we don't necessarily uh, uh, emotions we don't necessarily uh, uh, associate with these feelings, but they are. Emotions are linked to these fundamental feelings that are underneath. When we're happy, when we're sad, when we're ang angry, the emotion itself is always preceded by some kind of physical sensation. It's only after this physical sensation is interpreted that we say emotion uh, an emotion of some kind has occurred. For most of us. The emotion or the interpretation of the feeling, that, which is what the emotion is, is automatic. It's based on our past. It's based on memories. But it doesn't have to be so. We can consciously control our emotions. We may not be able to consciously control our feelings, but we can certainly consciously control our emotions. In my opinion, learning to work with our emotions, our interpretation, how we interpret our bodily sensations, rather than just automatically going with whatever emotion comes into our, comes into our presence, learning to control those emotions is a key element in keeping our entire bodies healthy, including our hearts. If the emotions that follow the physical sensations are based on survival threats, cortisol is going to be released, some, uh, our sympathetic nervous system will be activated, our fear nervous system will be activated, blood pressure will go up, breathing will become shallower, the heart's going to race, and these physical sensations can lead to, unfortunately, more survival emotions, more cortisol more sympathetic nervous system activation, and you end up with this vicious, never-ending cycle. And in my opinion, these elements are the real causes of heart disease, are the real causes of all disease, including heart disease. And it's not cholesterol, this absolute simplistic, simple-minded nonsense that you can somehow lower your cholesterol and not have to pay attention to any of these other aspects of health and somehow make your heart healthier just because you took a drug that lowered your cholesterol is absolute, absolute idiocy. I'm sorry to your medical model and representatives. It's absolute idiocy. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this.
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You could purchase longevity products off our websites, pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can be an entrepreneur, start your own business, work out of the home, be your own boss, get your products at the wholesale price, earn all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, all for a one-time $25 fee. And you can help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you like the world of health and the world of nutrition, if supplementation has helped you or a loved one and you want to help share and spread the word, the longevity business opportunity is something that you might want to look into. Check out our, uh, you can check out all the inform, you can find out all the information off our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. You can also call 866 735 2470. That's 866 735 2470 for more information. If you want to, uh, Give us a shout today if you have questions about any of the longevity products or your longevity business or if you're dealing with heart disease or you're on a statin drug or you're on any kind of medication and want to wean yourself off. Our number today, and we do have lines open, 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. All right, so this whole idea of the emotional aspect of health, the emotional correlates or the emotional precursors to physical disease is so important and so underappreciated. After being in the, in the healing business, the health business for over 30 years, what I've noticed is that these non-material, seemingly abstract aspects of health are just as important as nutrition, as exercise, as supplementation, as diet, as breathing, all the things we talk about on this program mostly. I call it the fourfold square of health. Nutriate, respirate, move, and rest. These are the physical aspects of health. We spend a lot of time talking about these. But really, the emotional aspects of health and the mental aspects and the spiritual aspects as well all need to be addressed if we're truly, truly going to be healthy. You're not going to hear this from your doctor. The medical model that's dedicated to surgeries and drugs and radiation and ablations and electrocutions and and all of the other devices and all of the other ways that we uh, supposedly get back to health. We don't ever get back to health. Nobody ever does anything for our chronic long-term health challenges with the exception perhaps of infections, which aren't really chronic long-term health challenges. Medicine doesn't really do much for people. In my opinion, that's because we really don't address these underlying aspects of health. We don't treat the body as a coherent system. A spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical system. In fact, it's only been recently, maybe the last 20 years or so, that we've begun, begun to understand scientifically and from a medical perspective that emotions and feelings and thoughts play just as an important role in how our bodies show up, for better or worse, as do uh, physical processes or any physical changes that we may attempt. In fact, even still today, most medical doctors, most physicians, most people in the medical world dismiss this idea of emotions and thoughts being having an impact on health. Most of them dismiss this idea as non-scientific. And this perspective of, uh, that, that emotions and feelings and thoughts are kind of airy-fairy and not evidence-based, not scientific, this is a vestige of the Enlightenment, which took place 600 years ago when medical science, and medic, the medical model was essentially deified. And maybe that was appropriate for the times, because before the Enlightenment, medical, what were, those who were medical professionals were blaming evil spirits for disease. There was a sense of superstition. It was kind of, medicine was based on superstition. And then the Enlightenment came along, and then it was the scientific method, and Sir Francis Bacon, and they all were about science and research and evidence, and, and perhaps that was appropriate in the, in the 1400s. But today... And this, is, uh, this should be obvious to everybody. Today, the medical model that was so wonderful and deified in, in the time uh, of the Enlightenment, today it is an absolute abysmal failure. And its track record in treating chronic degenerative disease, the 21st century version of the Black Plague, is an absolute failure. Its track record is horrific. 
Chronic degenerative diseases are increasing to the point today where one out of four Americans has a chronic, di tr chronic disease, and some 20% of Americans have multiple chronic diseases. Some 12% of Americans have five or more chronic degenerative diseases. The medical model is an absolute failure. And just like in the Black Plague, medieval doctors were helpless to do anything about this horrific epidemic which killed one out of four people in Europe in the 14th century, modern 21st century medicine is equally helpless as their Black Plague cousins, as the medieval physicians. 21st century medical professionals are absolutely helpless when it comes to dealing with our modern epidemic of chronic degenerative diseases, including cancer, autoimmune diseases, and heart disease. And just like medieval doctors blamed witches and little elves and evil clouds for the Black Plague in the 1400s or the 1300s, today physicians blame genes and, and, uh, for cancer and autoimmunity. They blame cholesterol for, and blockages for heart disease. But you know what? None of that matters because when it comes to our 21st century epidemic of chronic degenerative diseases, we don't need a medical model. The medical model may be useless, but we don't need them. We don't need drugs. Drugs don't help anybody when it comes to chronic diseases. Drugs do not help anyone when it comes to chronic degenerative diseases. They do not reverse diseases. At best, they just hide the symptoms. But we don't need the drugs. We don't need the doctors. That's because we all have access to healing through our bodies if we could just figure out how to leverage the built-in healing mechanisms. One important aspect of this underlying healing mechanism that's built into the body is the body's intelligence, the body's intelligence versus the brain's intelligence. And this intelligence is not just brain. It's not only located in the brain. When I talk about body intelligence, I'm not talking about just the brain's intelligence. I'm talking about the intelligence that's spread out throughout the body via the connective tissue, which actually functions as a body-wide brain, as a body-wide information processor. We've talked about this in the past. The connective tissue is a type of of information processor. And through this body-wide brain, we have an ability to sense our environment in a subliminal, subconscious way, subconscious fashion. And this subconscious, subliminal information processing is much quicker than the brain. Our body's intelligence is much faster than our brain's intelligence. And our body's intelligence is located in different centers. It's headquartered in different centers. It's spread out throughout the body via the connective tissue, and there are certain nodes or centers in the body, one of which is the intestine. The intestine is now known as the second brain. There's actually a book called The, the Second Brain that talks all about this. This is where gut feelings come from. And there's another information processing system in the body. There's another center or node or headquarters of information processing, and that's in the heart. This heart brain is incredibly important. The heart brain has a direct line to the brain in our skulls, and in fact, more information flows from our heart brain to our brain brain, from our heart brain to our head brain. More and more scientific research is pointing to the fact that our awareness and our understanding of the world, our sense of safety or our sense of lack of safety, originates from information that is coming from the body. And this is especially true of the heart, which scientists are now recognizing as being a highly complex intelligence system with its own functioning brain cells, its own functioning neurons, neurons that have memory. You have memory in your heart, neurons that have, uh, can process information. You have an information processor in your heart, just like the neurons in your skull, in your brain. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on our archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. Also have an archive page with search engine or search, uh, search box at brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products off brightsideben.com, also pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. If you're dealing with dark spots, hyperpigmentation, melasma, or acne blemishes, or you're looking for anti-aging, the only anti-aging ingredients are vitamin C and vitamin A, vitamin A in its retinol form. If you're not using vitamin C in its fat-soluble form, not the cheapo ascorbic acid, but the, the fat-soluble, premium, expensive vitamin C, 
as well as retinol on a regular basis, you are missing the boat on anti-aging topical skincare products. That's why I created my Truth Treatment products. They're basically delivery systems for vitamin C and retinol. No preservatives, no fragrances, no fillers, no waxes, no thickeners, no surfactants, no waxes, no water, no silicon, no oil, no nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. They're ideal for sensitive skin, especially our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream as well as our Truth Transdermal Sea Balm and Truth Transdermal Sea Serum and Truth Retinol 5% Gel. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And if you're dealing with acne, you might want to check out our Blemish Repair Complex made with N-acetylcysteine, selenium, vitamin A, vitamin C. I made a, I formulated our Truth, uh, my Truth Blemish Repair Complex because people are always asking about putting all the supplements that I recommend for acne into one, one capsule. And that's what I did with our Truth Blemish Repair Complex. It's also got nutrients that are important for liver health as well as skin health. There's an important relationship between the liver and acne, the liver being your organ of detoxification and acne in many ways being uh, a disease that's uh, the end result of internal toxicity. Acne is not a skin problem. It's an internal problem that shows up on the skin as all apparently or seemingly skin health issues are, including eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, vitiligo, dry skin, accelerated aging. These are all about the internal milieu of the body. They're not topical. And this is why dermatology is the absolute stupidest, dumbest of all the medical professions. Because skin problems aren't really skin problems. They're internal problems that show up on the skin. Anyway, you can find out all about our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Speaking of the skin, and by the way, we do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in a minute. Speaking of the skin, from, uh, from, let's see, where is this, from here, from the University of Dundee in Scotland, UV light treatment offers better outcomes for skin disease sufferers. Routine prescribing of ultraviolet light treatment for severe skin conditions could significantly reduce the use of steroid creams and tablets while improving patient outcomes. This is according to new research from the University of Dundee. In uh, in California, uh, in Scotland, uh, UV treatment apps is uh, leverages the power of the sun, ultraviolet radiation from the sun. I've said this so many times, and I've said it for so many years. The sun is our friend. The sun is our skin's friend, especially if you're dealing with eczema, especially with if you're dealing with psoriasis. No, you don't want to burn. This is true. You don't want to overexpose yourself to the sun. This is true. You don't want to be exposed to the sun under conditions of nutritional deficiencies. This is true. But it does not follow that the sun is some kind of enemy in the sky that is hell-bent on destroying our health and destroying our skin. We need the sun. We grew up in the sun. Vitamin D is produced in response to the sun. Um, by the way, vitamin D is re uh, produced in response to the chemical reaction or the biochemical reaction that occurs between cholesterol in the skin and the sun, which is another reason why you don't want to suppress cholesterol production. The sun is our friend, but if you're going to be out in the sun, make sure you're using vitamin C as a supplement, vitamin E as a supplement, and acetylcysteine as a supplement, zinc and selenium as supplements. These all protect the skin from, uh, from uh, ultraviolet radiation, so you can leverage the power of the sun without having to worry about damage to your skin. A little bit of sun every day is a good thing. From the Journal of Gerontology, high-intensity interval training can reverse frailty at advanced age. I love this. When we get older, it becomes even more important to exercise than we were than it is when we were younger. Elderly folks, frail folks can benefit dramatically, not just from high intensity interval training, which is what this study is about from the Journal of Gerontology, but also from weight training, resistance training. As we get older, it becomes extra important that we work our muscles. If you have neuropathy, it becomes extra important that you work your muscles. If you have any kind of joint or connective tissue, it becomes extra important that you work your muscles. Sure, if you have arthritis or if you have some kind of neuropathy or if you're frail and elderly, yes, it's true. You don't want to be working out like crazy in the gym. You don't want to be li lifting ridiculous amounts of weights, but small amounts of weights, lower, uh, uh, lighter weights. Intensity training, getting on a treadmill, these are all incredibly beneficial for the frail elderly body. They're just as, if not more, beneficial for the frail elderly body as they are for the youthful, more vigorous body. And 
What's more is you can improve mental health. You can improve brain health. You can improve emotional health with high intensity interval training. You can improve mental and emotional health with weight training as well. You'll be secreting more oxytocin. You'll be secreting more dopamine. You'll be secreting more serotonin. You'll be decreasing fat. You'll be reducing inflammation. All of these are benefits that uh, elderly folks can leverage from the comfort of their own living room or the comfort of their own homes simply by doing by working with five pound dumbbells. You can use uh, a backpack filled with books. You can uh, put a backpack on and just walk up and down the stairs or you can just even walk up and down the stairs briskly. Great workout for your glutes and for your hamstrings, for your legs, for your heart if you do it fast. There's so many ways that we can maintain our health as we get older. There's so many ways we can maintain our health, period without the medical model, which does nothing for us anyway, for the most part. All right, one more study. We'll get to your phones here. This is from, uh, this is from the journal Gastroenterology. Heartburn medicine can increase the risk of kidney disease. Proton pump inhibitors, yet again, another problem associated with your Nexiums and your Prilosex, which are among the best-selling drugs best-selling drugs of all time, let alone the best-selling drugs in America in, in the year 2017. Uh, Prilosec and Nexium, it seems like they're benign proton pump inhibitors. You can get them over the counter. But as it turns out, they are not benign, as all drugs, as no drugs are benign. Heartburn medicine can increase risk of kidney disease. People who take proton pump inhibitors for stomach acid reflux run a greater risk of cr uh, chronic kidney disease. We know these proton pump inhibitors can lead to osteoporosis. We know that these proton pump inhibitors can le lead to dementia and heart disease. If you have heartburn, you have a digestive health problem. It's not a lack of proton pump inhibitors that's causing your heartburn. It's eating the wrong food. And it's lack of the right kind of bacteria in the gut. Dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria. If you're dealing with heartburn, number one, do a food diary, an elimination diet. Number two, get on a good probiotic supplement like your Ultimate Nightly Essence. Number three, Make sure you're using apple cider vinegar with all your meals. Digestive enzymes probably will help as well. There are so many ways we can maintain our health without the medical model. There are so many ways we can maintain our, our health without medical intervention. And this notion that if we have heartburn or, or we have any kind of health challenge, we have to go to the doctor to help, uh, help us deal with it flies in the face of common sense and evidence. Our chronic degenerative disease crisis is evidence that the medical model of pharmacology and surgery and electrocution and ablation doesn't work. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open. We'll get your phone calls in our next segment. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. On the bright side, got lines open, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to California and welcome Lydia to the bright side. Good morning, Lydia. Is this my friend Lydia? Yes, it Who is. I haven't talked to? Hey, Lydia. What's going on? Long time no talk. Ben, I got motivated to call today because I was listening. It was about the skincare that made me want to call, but I've been thinking, and I don't want to talk about that now, but I do want to get on that skincare of yours. The truth? I really want to bad. I don't want to miss the boat. Yeah, the truth. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to miss the boat on the retinol. Are you using retinol now? No, I'm not using anything. I got to get, I, and I do want to do that. But it's not I'll a send you some samples, Lydia. Email, email me your address. I'll send you some samples. Okay. Okay. You got oh. it. Okay. okay. Anyway, the reason I called, I, I do want to tell you one fun thing quickly, and that is, is that last week I spent a lot of time listening to you, and I, um, I was really got motivated to talk to my brother who's been on uh, the Stanton drugs for three years and the only good thing is when he started he did do on the he did go on the code q10 but I, I just I felt so guilty about not doing anything and you had you talked so much about getting off the Stanton drugs I just started writing notes and then I talked to him and I'm so proud that I got through to him, and he's going to go to his doctor, and he's going to call it his chiropractor because he lives in Ohio. So, you know, that, that's what that's the only kind of doctors are around that you can go to that are alternative to the medical model. You know, I mean, you know, and Chir the chiropractors. Go, you're talking about the chiropractors. Yeah, that's the where he's going to get some info on how to get Good. off of his drugs and awesome. he's going to talk to his doctor. How, but how old it you? was a big success. My brother's like 60. 566 I don't know but good job <laughs> Lydia I, it, 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 but I was proud of myself but anyway now 
what I want, what I thought I should ask you about right now is about my my best friend. Um, I was with them this weekend. I'm in Ohio right now, and um, she's she's in really good shape. She's been she's been doing yoga her whole life. Very flexible. She can walk miles and miles and miles. But her back, she has arthritis in her back. She can't stand. She can walk. She can she can sit, but she can't stand. Just That's stand because her, her back starts to hurt. That she says it's arthritis, and she's also on Synthroid, which I couldn't believe. I I, I, couldn't, I don't even know how many years she's been on Synthroid. But anyway, her attitude was because I she knows you. I've talked to her about you, and she's listened to you, you know, in the past. But you know, she doesn't believe that she can heal herself through nutrition or anything. And I was just wondering if you could, you know, give me any suggestions on what I can say to help her, or is can she be helped? I mean, you, you know what? And she, she can't be. Yes. Theoretically, anybody can help. Theoretically, anybody can deal with their arthritis on their own. Theoretically, that anybody can access their body's healing systems or healing mechanisms that are built in. Theoretically, but there's one uh-huh. element that needs to turn that's needed to turn the theory into actuality. You know what that is? Willingness. Uh-huh willingness and belief okay belief first and then willingness if somebody's not willing or if somebody's not believing it's unfortunate because then the healing mechanisms remain dormant and that's unfortunate for your friend because if she's not willing and she doesn't believe then there's nothing you could do about it she's going to go to the all my friends she can she can be willing i just Maybe I if she's willing, she absolutely, there's things she can do. Here's the thing, Lydia. If she's on Synthroid, which is one of the most useless of all medications and one of the best-selling of all medications, if she's uh-huh. on Synthroid, that's telling me she's got a thyroid problem. The right, thyroid right. regulates healing. The thyroid regulates growth. The thyroid regulates repair. If she's hypothyroid, if she has a thyroid problem, that's, that's going to impact her ability to heal. Now, if she has a thyroid problem... The Synthroid isn't going to make a difference because the problem is in the thyroid. It's not in the hormone. Her, her gland is not mm-hmm. producing the hormone, and the doctors think, well, we'll just give her some fake hormone, which is what Synthroid is. It's, it's the weak form of thyroid hormone. It's inactive thyroid hormone, and theoretically the body will activate it. The problem is it doesn't work because the thyroid gland itself is responsive to cortisol, that is the di- uh, a stress hormone, which means the more cortisol you're secreting, the more stress hormone you're secreting, the, the poorer your thyroid's going to function. Hypercortisol leads to hypothyroid. Too much cortisol, too much adrenal stress leads to a hypo- uh, hypothyroidism. Adrenal stress itself follows blood sugar problems. Blood sugar issues mm. follow digestive issues. I call that the triangle of disease. And as long as you have this underlying triad of bodily breakdown, that is digestive system breakdown, dysglycemia or messed up blood sugar, and then a, a, a dysfunction at the level of the adrenal thyroid complex, there ain't nothing that's going to help. So she's got to slow down, first of all. Very likely she's type A. So she's got to relax her body and relax her psyche as well. Calm the body down. That's where you work with your cortisol. There's nutrients you can take to stabilize your cortisol. Vitamin A, vitamin E, progesterone, zinc. And these are also nutrients that will help with inflammation as well. So calm the body down. Lower the cortisol. Number two, stabilize the blood sugar. Use your sweet more fiber, the amino acids, taurine and arginine, niacin, uh, all the B-complex, reduce your sugar intake, keep your insulin and your blood sugar, keep your insulin stable and your blood sugar low, and then last but most certainly not least, probably first and most important, is work on digestive health. Guess what? Thyroid hormone is activated at the level of the intestine. Probiotics, good bacteria, play a major role in the health of the thyroid. So if she's hypothyroid, at very least get her on the or tell her to start using the ultimate nightly essence eating fermented food and working on digestive health at the very least then all the other things the the whole blood sugar you see all the places we can work i don't mean to bombard you with information or bombard you with health strategies no no, do you hear all the ways that you can take care of this and for her to say there's nothing she could do hang on let me just finish this up real quick lydia for her to say there's nothing she can do and she has all of these things all of these uh uh, uh, aspects and all of these um mechanisms at her disposal digestive health blood sugar health lowering cortisol is silly it's crazy how is how ask her how her synthroid's working go ahead i i haven't asked her and i haven't i'm assuming she doesn't think she has nothing to do i didn't really point blank her on it Turn her on to this archive. Turn her on to this archive or tell her to give me a shout or send me an email. I'm happy to help. Oh, no, I will. I will. But, but I, what you, I want you to address is that what also the 
her um, arthritis in her back. I mean, is glucogel I mean, caps, cartilage, okay. collagen supplements, fucoid Z, digestive enzymes as anti-inflammatories, vitamin E as an anti-inflammatory, alpha lipoic acid as an anti-inflammatory, zinc and vitamin C for, for helping generate connective tissue. There are endless ways that she can address her back problem, her thyroid problem, and the underlying causes as well. All right, right. I got to motivate I, here. I, I love Lydia, it. please have her call me or contact me somehow. I do want to, I'm going to leave you with this, and that is that I did, uh, I called uh, the Healthy Gut Girl, and I'm on her protocol. Nice. And I, I, so I just want you to know that I'm, I'm working on my deal. That's why I don't feel like to ask you about me right now, because I'm doing oh, that. Well, so, well just, stay in touch with me, Lydia. You. Nice to talk to you. Oh, I sure will. All right. All right. Take Thanks. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Robert in Vegas, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Yeah, good morning, Ben. Thanks for taking my call. Appreciate sure. it. Uh, sure. You're doing great work as usual. Um, Thank you. I had a question, Ben, uh, about you that I've always wondered. Um, about me? You give out a lot of advice and things to do when people call in when I have this, I have that, arthritis, high blood pressure, yeah. diabetes, cancer at all. But I've noticed you never give a disclaimer like uh, I'm not giving medical advice. You know, know why I don't? You know why I don't? My next question. How's it Let me tell you why I don't. It's a great question. I only got about a minute. So let me tell you why I don't. Because I don't give medical oh. advice. I give common sense advice. Medical advice is the booby prize. Medical advice doesn't help anybody. Medical advice is the, the bastion of fools. I give common sense advice. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking common sense, and I'm not talking okay. diseases. I'm talking bodily breakdowns. Let the doctors have their diseases. Let, their ha let the doctors have their diagnosis. They don't help anybody. The di I've said this so many times. I'll say it again. Your diagnosis doesn't matter. What matters is your symptomology and the way the body is breaking down. Doctors treat words. They treat names. They treat diagnoses. And, that, and if I were to say something like I was going to treat a disease state, yeah, I would get in trouble. If I were to give medical advice, I would get in trouble. I give common sense. You see the difference? So is that what happened to Brzezinski down there in Houston? No, Brzezinski was treating a disease. He was treating cancer. When somebody has cancer, you know what I say to them? I say, make your body stronger. I don't tell people how to treat a cancer. I say, you make your body stronger, and God will treat the cancer. The body, the divine force through the human body will treat the cancer. What you got to do is make your body stronger. Doctors don't say that. You understand here the difference, the distinction? And that's why nobody can come at me, because I'm just talking common sense. I'm saying nutrition is critical for a healthy body, not nutrition is critical for a diseased state. I'm saying nutrition is critical for a healthy body, and then the healthy body will take care of the diseased state. You see the difference there, Robert? Crystal clear. I get it now. Uh all right, buddy. Good to talk to you, man. All right. That's all the time we have for today, friends. I hope that's. I hope you guys understand that. This is so important because I'm talking here about normal common sense ideas. Exercise, breathing, eliminating problem foods, using nutritional supplementation, and your diagnosis is irrelevant. What counts is your body is not working correctly. Don't worry about the name of your disease state. Just take care of the body. Make the body healthy again. Make the body strong, and the body through the divine force will take care of whatever your disease state is. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.